Well, Flames fans will want to pay close attention to the Saddle Dome tomorrow night. The CHL Top Prospects game comes back to Calgary for the first time since 2001. There are plenty of names to watch during the scouting showcase, especially if the Flames get one of the top picks this year. Former Flames players Tim Hunter and Jim Poplinski have signed on as coaches. They're here to tell us what to expect. Gentlemen, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. My pleasure. Uh, one of the byproducts is that you guys, who know each other very well on and off the ice, get to hang out. Uh, so when were you approached to be a, a coach? And I'm sure you jumped at the opportunity. Well, I was kind of on the outside <laughs> looking in. I was, uh, wasn't part of it. Then I became an assistant coach, and then Lanny couldn't take over as head coach, so now I'm a head coach at Timor. So. But again, it's a thrill to be in the same sentence as Bobby Orr, the Canadian Hockey League, and the NHL, and the hanging around with my pal Jim and uh, the rest of the Flame guys. It's a long process, long negotiation. Oh, yeah? Involved, yeah? What are you getting in return? <laughs> we get to come and be with you. <laughs> well, we appreciate it. And some other uh, former Flames also uh, going to hang out with you there, I understand. Yeah, we've, um, we've got a, an interesting group. Paul Reinhardt and Mark Hunter are with me, and uh, Mike Vernon and Joel Otto are with, uh, with Tim. And the idea was with the Prospects game, although it is... Uh, Canadian Hockey League, and in this particular case, a Western Hockey League-centric event uh, to bring some guys from the Flames, the Flames owning the Hitmen, mm -hmm. have a connection to a large extent with the 25th anniversary of the Stanley Cup, give guys a chance to get together, and anybody who was who connected to the uh, Western Hockey League in some way, and that's how our coaching team got put together. Okay, so let's go back to when uh, you guys were both drafted in the same year. Uh, what did the draft look like? Was there, were there any events leading up to this, any kind of fanfare? Well, it was a funny year because they changed the draft from a regular 19-year-old draft to an 18-year-old underage draft. It was the first year they did it. So the draft was moved to August, and, uh, you know, there was a, uh, it was a fun process. They didn't really have a lot of players go into the draft. It was a draft over the phone, and you got a call, and right. you know, it was kind of <laughs> shocking, actually. I was driving a parts truck in Toronto, and I remember stopping to get my truck filled up and the guy said hey some guy named Bill Waters called and said you've been drafted I went what really and, uh, and that's how it went down and that was it yeah. and it's pretty different now well it's uh, it's a lot different it's uh, it's stressful I, I I feel for players and families that go and sit there and wait through the whole thing and uh, you know there's pluses and minuses to both okay so the scouts are busy uh, obviously all season long taking a look at these top prospects but this is a chance to really shine the spotlight how much a part does this play? Does, does their performance play uh, in this particular game? Can it make or break them or not? Well, I don't think it can make or break them. It's just another big focus game that they can play in to, to focus on their skills and, and, and demonstrate how they can play against like kind. And they're all the same age, 17 year olds. And uh, it's a competitive game, so it'll be exciting. One of the things that, uh, that Paul and I have said to our team is. Uh, a little bit stronger than Tim's comments. You're not going to convince somebody one way or the other in this game. Uh, we're really trying to make sure these guys relax and just go out and enjoy the game. We can't change how they play. We're not going to teach them new skills, but we can, to a great extent, give them some indication of how you behaved in the National Hockey League. And when you have a chance to go out and play, to actually enjoy the game. But make no mistake, the, the scouts are there. People oh, are for sure. People are very Absolutely. much watching what's happening. Yeah. They were at practice yesterday, and they'll be there all day today do, watching them do their physical right. testing and what have you. So, oh, yeah, they're around. Okay, so you guys both uh, played with Paul Reinhardt, who's hanging out with you during yeah. the game. His son uh, expected to be a top draft pick, I think, sitting at number four. Is he sitting at number? Yeah, sitting at number four in central scouting uh, in their midterm report. Let's talk about him a little bit. Well, Paul, uh, Paul was the best man when I got married in 1984, and uh, shortly thereafter, I stood up with him at his wedding. And so, um, I've known uh, known him for a long time in a lot of different ways. And his son is a is a, a very interesting blend of, of Paul and his mom Teresa. Uh, I would tell you that Teresa is more mentally tough than Paul is, and Paul is about as skilled an athlete as uh, as I've ever met. And uh, those two combinations have have given Max a very interesting set of skills and mental toughness. He's a He's a skilled young man. He, he presents himself well, and, uh, and he's a very, very uh, uh, crafty and clever player. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun to have him on our team tomorrow night. And, of course, the host team, the Calgary Hitmen. A couple guys in the mix. Jake Vertanen ranked number nine by Central Scouting in the midterm report. Uh, let's talk about this kid. Very impressive. He's a, he's a good size. Uh, right shot winger and uh, very versatile, lots of lots of skill around the net and a good shot. Uh, we're excited to have him and uh, we also have another hitman in Ben Thomas mm -hmm. and another 
big right shot. Uh, he's a defenseman, and uh, uh, it's going to be fun to have uh, have these two guys. They get to play at home and uh, in their own ring. Yeah, so many fantastic players hitting the ice. Uh, one thing you can offer is experience. And uh, what would be sort of some some words of wisdom you would you would give well, to these guys feeling this kind of pressure? Tim Tim touched on it a little bit earlier. Uh, it's to relax. You know, it it it. it, it when you relax, it doesn't mean that uh, you're not playing at a high intensity. But when you get into different situations, uh, to be able to play your best, you can't be gripping the stick too tight. You can't be gripping the club too tight. You can't be holding the bat too tight. You can't be holding the pencil too tight. You need to relax. And, and although these guys have had lots of chances to play at a very high level, uh, this is another one of those opportunities where they can do it. So, guys, it's relax. You're not going to make or break your, your life on this game. You have to learn to enjoy the game, respect it, and... Uh, and as well, think about giving back in some way. Well, and what a great opportunity for fans to enjoy this as well. The Top Prospects game tomorrow night at the Dome. If you can't make it down, you can catch all the action on Sportsnet West. For more information, make sure you head to breakfasttelevision.ca. Nice to meet you, and yeah, nice to see you. you. See you guys tomorrow night on the ice. We're going to